This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with the author of My Body is a Junkyard. I'll tell you all about him and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, an unofficial cat foster. He's a pet sitter, a poet, a Virgo. He's an adventure seeker, a boozy foodie, and a Navy veteran. He's originally from Walla Walla, Washington, currently lives near Salt Lake City, Utah. He shares his home with his pop pop, aka his dad, and a list of cats. Are we ready? He has gremlin who's a mischievous domestic short hair that is about eight pounds of fury. He has Quasimodo, a male cat that is very sweet, but toothless, poor guy. He has Syl, AKA the bitch, a long haired nebulung female cat. He has Ginger, his dad's fluffy orange senior cat. And Bobby Louise, another one of his dad's cats, a senior Manx cat who's also called the boss. He's currently fostering Blue Boy, Blackie and Lamb Chop who are on their way to their forever home from being quite feral and finding their way to my guest. He is an awkward queer introvert, he says, navigating this wild, wild world with poems and prose in his heart and pizza and pussycats in his soul. His name is H. Alexander, and he's the author of My Body is a Junkyard currently available on Amazon and all fine booksellers. Welcome, Age. It's so good to have you on the show. Great to be here. <laughs> awesome. Did you like your two super long intro? I love it. Oh, so this is like, I get it now. It's like NPR. I went to a recording once and I saw how the sausage was made. You do all the things up front, then you record the things, and then you edit the things and slice and dice and put it together. Correct. That's, That's incredible. Exactly what happens. That's exactly it, it, what happens. It looked live to me. It looked like so like natural how, how you put it together, the ones I've been watching. And obviously I'm focusing on all your cat ones. I just did cat school and some other cool ones, Critter Room. But that's cool. I've never done this before. That's so awesome. Okay, yeah, welcome, welcome. Well, the next thing I do every time is introduce our drinking game for the day. So today's drinking word, everybody, if you're playing the game, is this word right here. The secret word is junkyard. So make sure you take a drink of whatever it is you're enjoying. Never drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and just drink whenever you hear either one of us say that word, which, by the way, my guests won't know what it is. I don't even know what it is until I start editing. So I always introduce the show with a game, H, and I want to get to know you a little bit. Before we talk about your book and your obsession with cats, I want to play H's Faves. Okay. It's really easy. You're going to win this game. This is the easiest (laughs) game you've ever played in your life. All you're going to tell me is the answer to my questions about what your favorite things are. Perfect. Let's do it. All right. Favorite breed of cat. All cats. All of them. <laughs> ragdolls, favorite. Yes, <gasps> ragdolls. Oh, I love so how beautiful. they collapse. You know, the ragdoll is a U.S. bred cat, as mm. I learned from your show. Um, <laughs> but I love what I, I used to have a ragdoll. I love how you pick them up and they, they collapse like a doll in your arms. That's why they're called that. <gasps> I so did not it's, know that. 
I, I, I do like that little part. Faces. Oh yeah, and the fluffiness. Um, they have. I had a flame pointed rag doll, and his name was Odin, and he was also uh, mean. But yeah, they they just <laughs> relax in your arms, go limp, sort of like a little doll. Oh, I love that. Well, this is not related to animals at all. What's your favorite type of pizza? Oh my god. Okay, my favorite pizza is anything with gorgonzola cheese, spinach as one pizza half and half one side of the pizza then capers and sort of like smelly cheese and oh my god the fishies that people don't like but the french love i love anchovy pizza seriously it's very underrated you got to try it you got to put some capers on it for whatever reason the saltiness you know mixes with saltiness and really good sort of more mild cheese but you can still taste it that way it all mixes together it's very good Wow, that is a lot of flavors. That is oh, yeah. crazy. So we love pizza. My husband's Italian and I'm just a pizza lover. I've always been a, a pizza lover. And we have like big debates about what kinds of pizzas we like. And my mom and my grandmother anchovy pizza all day long, especially if what? it's like a really like classic Italian That's thin, awesome. thin yes. type Neapolitan type pizza. Yes. They love their anchovies. Okay, I love it. I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence about the anchovies. Like, if I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. If I'm not, it's too fishy for me and I'm out. All right, next one. Do you eat your pizza with wine, by the way? Question. Or beer? It depends on what's in the house and where I'm at. Both. Got it. Got it. Both. Okay, I'm really, I can't do pizza with anything but wine, personally. So what is your favorite wine? Because you told me that you're a bit of a wino. Well, I mean... I would not like to say that in case my work sees this. I'm not a wino. I'm a wine <laughs> connoisseur. Oh, oh, oh. I stand yeah, corrected. Wino, yeah, wine connoisseur. Uh, fan of wine. Um, I'm from wine country. My hometown, Walla Walla, uh, is Columbia Valley. And so, you know, there's over 100 wineries there now. And they're really famous for their Merlots, their red wines. And so I love, I favor Merlots and Cabs. But I'm open to, if say you love wine and you say this is my favorite wine, and it's maybe a sweeter or a whiter wine that I don't typically, you know, flock to, I will try it because it's your favorite, right? And I want to share right. that, right? Right, that's the beauty of wine. It gets to try different wines and see what you maybe like. Maybe I am a wine now. Like. I sound you like are. a wine. You are, I mean, wine is not a bad yeah. thing. No, okay. True. So I believe, and I should ask you what you're drinking tonight, because I believe I saw you sipping on a beer. Did I see you sipping on a beer? I am sipping on a beer. In fact, just in case I'm an introvert, I wasn't sure how stressful this would be. I have many beers. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, no, there you go. It's peeking through my fake background. So it is Salt Lake City, an unknown fact. People here who are not religious love booze. <laughs> and uh, they have a lot of microbreweries here and some distilleries for whiskey. And so I'm drinking a local brew. It's I'm just now trying it out. It's pretty good. It's a golden sour ale from Shades Brewing in Salt Lake City. And it's extra tart. So I may consider mixing it with something, but I'm enjoying it. Nice. I love a local beer. I'm not a huge beer drinker, but if I'm out and about, especially in the summer, and there's a brewery or there's some oh, kind of yeah. local beer to try, I will absolutely always try it. My next question for you before I tell you what I'm drinking is, what, who's your favorite author? Who? Oh, does it have to be nonfiction, fiction, does it matter? Or? Doesn't matter. Okay, my favorite author probably is David Sedaris. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he yeah. writes essays, he's hilarious. Yes. I love, I love how he recounted his entire life, especially childhood, having OCD and just, you can picture it and it's hysterical and i've also been able to meet him and listen to him read and he's way quirkier in person like he ate a full chicken dinner while he's meeting people and signing books and had a bib and everything and it was <laughs> hilarious that is so cool my husband's a big fan of his interestingly uh, enough so i've got to tell him that well i wasn't sure if you were going to go with like a classic author like hemingway uh, so oh today, yes you yes, like hemingway Okay, I do. well, that's great because I made a drink, or my husband made a drink. Thank you, bartender. He made me a classic daiquiri, which was what Hemingway drank in Cuba and uh, Miami and Key West, wherever he would go. And he would always make it a double. I'm actually having a single. Cheers. I'm so excited to have you on the show. I just want to propose a toast to you being here. Cheers. <laughs> that's it. Perfect. 
that's gonna be your uh your still have yes. you seen the stills i do <laughs> i have you... seen the stills yes yes yeah, so that's gonna be your still it was really good all right yeah that okay <laughs> it'll be like not a wino a bureau a bureau a bureau a new yeah. word bureau all right yeah. so next what is your favorite season everything but winter but honestly my favorite one is fall especially here or in my home state i love i love color and i love the the fall season with all the the leaves and everything changing and it's sort of a great you know poetic goodbye to the season we had and into the new one so yeah so you guys get a lot of snow up there i've been watching the real housewives of salt lake city and uh, y'all get a <laughs> lot of snow up there yeah yeah, it's overrated. It's it mostly snows in the mountains, but yeah, it, it snows here too. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of snow. That's why I, I came to Sun City. My husband's military. They moved us to oh. Fort Bliss. Yes. And uh, I stayed here because it's always sunny in Sun City. And I love it that way. I love Sun too. I can't help myself. All right. What is your favorite song of all time? You have to choose one. Like a song that I would listen over and over and over. Oh, yep. God. I know it's oh, hard. This is hard. Especially here, I'm just belching like Homer Simpson. <laughs> that, oh man, it's so hard. Ah, what do I listen to? I can't think of. Okay, music. Anything. Your favorite genre? Everything, but lately I'm listening to Tears for Fears, the new album, Ooh. and also incorporating some of the old. It's really fun. It depends on what I'm doing. Like when I'm driving or I want to set the mood and be in a good, like, you know, seize the day, then right. it's going to be something pop like pink you know um, oh, I, love I love pink i love pink she's such a yeah. badass yeah oh i yeah i i am in love with pink i mean <laughs> <laughs> who isn't but who isn't really <laughs> that's true um okay favorite holiday favorite holiday i love halloween <gasps> I said and that the day of you. the dead yeah oh, day of the dead too. halloween i feel like your glasses tell me that you're a halloween day of the dead statement kind of person i love your glasses by the way I wouldn't just go dress up without people. That would be kind of weird. But yeah, I'll I'll attend parties. Even as an introvert, I'll socialize and dress up and have fun. And I like for him too, the Jewish cross-dressing holiday. Often men and women will, will wear the other attire. Um, uh -huh. and, and that's fun too. So basically, I like all of the costume holidays. Yeah, I, why not? I love it. I love yeah. it too. Actually, I used to hate it when I was single because I felt like everybody was dressed like thirst. It was like a thirst trap, right? Like everybody's oh, like yeah. this sexy nurse and this sexy this. And like now that I'm a mom, I get to do like themed Halloween parties oh, yeah. with my family and they're goofy and they're fun and they're not sexy at all. And like, I'm like, okay, this is way more fun than having to be like, you know, what can I dress up as to like catch a dude or something? I love it when families like pick something and dress up like Batman, like even morbid ones. I mean, you know, food for thought, like someone here, my hairdresser, you know, pre-COVID, cause I cut it myself now, but uh, was Bruce Wayne as a, you know, their son was, but then it was the mom and dad after they got killed. <laughs> it was totally <laughs> messed up, but it was like clever too. And, and then they did a whole Guardians of the Galaxy where they all dressed up and she did their hair. And I, I love it with like whole families though. They just like go all out for it. Love it too. We've done like really like benign ones because my kids are really little, but I feel little, like as, yeah. as they get older, they're going to want to be really silly stuff. I have a friend who was like blippy and like her kids were like the trash truck thing that they like, she like made a whole trash truck thing and like one of his episodes, like the kids are going to start asking for more stuff. I know it. All right. What is your favorite place to visit? In the world? Anywhere. You could go right now. I give you a ticket where you're going. Oh my God. Okay. If COVID didn't exist and I wasn't afraid of flying anymore, I would go back to <laughs> Italy, Sorrento, and just eat all the pizza, find all the cats, drink all the wine. <laughs> like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. I'm coming with you. That is oh amazing. Oh yeah, let's do it. That sounds let's like a perfect it. trip. All right, and the last one is, what is your favorite movie? Oh, that one's a little easier for me because I'm super obsessed with movies. What isn't my favorite movie? Basically, <laughs> I love so many things, but uh, I love all of the Marvel movies of late. My favorite one I mentioned earlier is Guardians of the Galaxy, just the first one, not the second one, but the soundtrack was amazing. The acting was amazing. The women were strong feminists, unlike the director who's kind of a mm -hmm. jackass. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like the second one because the woman who actually co-wrote the first one that he sort of took credit for, her name is Nicole Perlman, I think, 
it was her idea and James Gunn was brought in to make it better and add the comedy and he totally had a mantrum and tried to take credit and tried to say you could look it up tried to say that well i guess you know hollywood recognizes first drafts yeah when you write a book guess what the author gets the credit not the editor <laughs> exactly. right exactly oh my gosh i did not so know about I do this love drama him, but he's a drama queen and be a feminist come on dude and also i love the use of the word mantrum like wh how have i missed that word like i feel <laughs> oh. like i have never used that word before but yeah. like, where's it been all my life yeah, you're welcome. I've I've seen a man drummer too. I hate to say it. All right, so that was our game, but now I need to quote you. I I was you know stalking you on social media, okay, and I saw you had posted. Sometimes my heart is like a dog, forgiving and hopeful. Other times my heart is like a cat, ferocious and homicidal. So just so I know, who am I dealing with right now? Is it the forgiving and hopeful heart or is it the ferocious and homicidal heart? Definitely the forgiving, yes, and hopeful. Yeah, you seem yeah. very, very like yeah. at ease, like calm, yeah. cool, cal calm and collected. Yeah. All right, so how long have you been writing? Because you were somewhere I found that you were a Navy veteran and now you're the author of a book that we're going to get into. So when did this all happen? Have you always been a writer? Yeah, I wrote all through high school and I won some awards. And in fact, I, I wrote some cheesy speech when I was 14 about be what it means to be a patriot before the word was sort of hijacked. And I had to read it at the football game. And I don't like sports. And it was super humiliating, but it came with a pizza party. So I did it. I read it. And I won this essay contest at 14. And then I got a pizza party, which is totally me, right? But yes. I, I mainly wrote speeches and essays. And I only dabbled in poetry. And so it's only been since COVID that I started kind of going back to poetry. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So your book, My Body is a Junkyard, which I love the title. I mean, I'll never yeah. forget that. It's perfect. It's all poems. Is that right? No prose? It's all poems, but some of the, I mean, it's definitely not like hoity toity poetry. It's not Shakespeare or anything. <laughs> it's more like modernized poems and some of the poetry are longer prose type poems an english major which i am by the way might not call it poetry <laughs> got it got there's, it got it got a, it there's a debate out there but i believe that it's poetry and i hope that people who read it also believe so well you know what's really funny is poetry has always made me really uncomfortable oh okay because it's so i guess vulnerable is that yes yes is that what i'm gonna find when i read your book i have a feeling oh, yes. that's exactly what i'm gonna find it's, it's exactly what you're gonna find i didn't get this adorable and funny without going through a lot of crap <laughs> but i am funny and awkward and naturally or so i hear and i can be a debbie downer too and so my poems i won't read the debbie downer ones but it's about what happened in healing so it's definitely it has a positive spin and it's sort of like the stories of my family. So it's a lot about my mother and her death and then my father who went to prison, but I do it in in a very lighthearted, non-judgmental way when I can. And then other ways it's more of just sharing their stories and as a child of those adults just being sort of an observer and articulating my, you know, emotions but no judgment. I intentionally did that because, you know, we don't get to pick who we love. And I still love them regardless of how the lives unfolded. But then I also have funny ones too. So when I read them in person, I always say, okay, I'm going to read two maybe sad ones, prepare whatever, but I'm going to end with a funny one. I don't feel comfortable leaving a, a, a group of people who are like, well, cry bitches, you know, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Um, I want people laughing. I, I love laughter and, and I want to share stories, especially inherited stories. And then I want people to laugh. So I love that so much. I love your perspective of accepting the people we are given as they are. It's a hard journey. I'm sure you've done a lot of work to get there, but I do have to take yes. a break and I want to talk more about your healing and the role that cats have played. As soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors, don't go anywhere. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor 
and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to cattreetray.com. That's cattreetray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Rabada, and today I'm talking to H. Alexander, the author of My Body is a Junkyard. And don't we all feel that way sometimes? I mean, it's just like such a relatable title that I, without knowing what's in it, I already wanted to read it. But H, I want to kind of tell our audience how the book is described, and then I'm going to invite you to read a poem, if that's okay with you. Yes. Yeah? Wonderful. Okay. So according to Amazon, My Body is a Junkyard is a raw and powerful collection of writings by H. Alexander that charts a literary course through the poet's life, growing up religious, discovering the fluidity of sexuality and gender, overcoming hardships, and learning to love his complicated family and himself unconditionally. The pages within explore painful journeys, but also ones of healing, compassion, and laughter. If that doesn't make somebody pick up the book, I don't know what will. And another thing that you talk about a lot is pizza and cats, apparently. Yes. Will you please read one of your cat poems for us? Yes. So I I will read the final poem, which I is, I mean, my favorite. Is that egotistical? My favorite poem of mine is, it's called Tombstone. Okay. So you know that feeling you get when you start falling in love? Hormones flying, fantasies whirling the moon and the sun, all perfect in their rotations. Every single song you hear lights up your soul. You want to recite poetry. You want to write poetry. You dress up and maybe even add a dollop of scent. You see rainbows everywhere you go and four leaf clovers too. You are one obnoxious, lovesick cliche after another. You know what I mean? That's exactly how I feel about cats and pizza. Every single cat I meet is a rainbow, even the evil ones, especially the evil ones. Every single pizza I see is a poem, even the shitty ones. When I die, my tombstone will read, he probably loved cats and pizza too much, but he sure was happy. I love it! I did not see it going into Cats and Pizza, but there we went. I love it yeah. so, so much. Okay, so did you have cats growing up? I did. Yeah, I mean, yes, my fa- my other family members. So I didn't have the greatest, spoiler alert, if you do read, anyone reads my book, I didn't have the greatest upbringing. However, someone in my life I cared about had pets, and I always that- loved the cats. Yes. Did you connect with them immediately? Was it a process? Yes. Do you remember? No, I connected with them immediately. And I remember their names and I remember what they look like. And I remember roughly how old I was or where I lived. And and my dad is also a crazy, he's the original one, probably the OG <laughs> crazy cat dad. He, if not kept in check, we would get reported probably to the Vain Society. He would be a hoarder of cats. He's so giving despite, you know, choices he's made in his past. He is the most giving person and he loves loves cats and at certain times in his life he's had about 20 feral cats where he lines them up not here because i have some rules Mm -hmm. um i don't want to go to jail or anything but he he lines these farm cats that and i saw it when one time when i was visiting and he had like 20 metal tents and he just had a giant bag of like you know cattle feed type cat food and just like <laughs> ding 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 filled them out and this was before we all had phones i just had a tiny little flip phone you know <laughs> and cats from everywhere like from rooftops from underneath buildings at my grandparents house they appeared suddenly you know pavlov whatever they hear the noise <laughs> And then zero cats to 20 within 20 seconds. That is so cool. So 
What is it about cats that you prefer, say, over dogs? Like, why are you not obsessed with dogs and pizza? What do you think? I mean, I would still pet dogs and want to be right. their friends if I see them. But I don't know. I love cats. I love the fact they purr mm-hmm. usually. And they're like the only sociopaths I welcome in my life. And they're independent, but they're beautiful. They're mischievous. They can tell just like dogs, though. I mean, I don't I just want to get it straight, even though I'm not straight. (laughs) I do not dislike dogs. I just like it lights up my soul. Cats like I don't know why it's it must be a genetic thing I inherited. Like I said, my dad, it just like if I see a cat or we talk about cats or I watch cat videos, or I hear cat, like, I am immediately happy. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. So I had a guest, like, in season one, ages ago, that told me that there is a thought out there, like, it's not proven by science or anything, but some people believe that cats use their purr to heal themselves. And in mm. purring in our presence, they might actually be healing us, too. Really? And I would totally agree with that, right? Like when I your cat it. is on your lap and purring, oh, like, yeah. there is definitely a healing to that. I agree. Do you think I could get my money back from my therapist though? No, no. I think the perfect situation would be therapy while <gasps> with a purring cat. Okay. I'm going to look into that now. Therapy and cats. Yes. I love Forget it. goat yoga. We need cat therapy. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to write that I, down. I'm going to sign up for that as well. Okay. So your dream. One of your dreams, because I think you probably have many, yes. is to have a cat rescue called Gatos and Games. So tell yes. me what that would look like for you. Okay, so I'm still in research phase. I have studied multiple foreign languages, and I really, and being a writer, and just an English major who never graduated, but you know, I still identify as an English major, technically. <laughs> I love the alliteration. So one, I liked Games and Gatos. Got to go together, it. right? There is a cat cafe in Salt Lake City called Tinker's. I would love to put her in touch with you. She has a beautiful story and it's like a grassroots. She did a Kickstarter. It is the best place. I've been to many cat cafes and this is one of my favorites in the country. I would love to talk to her. And I, yeah, and I would love you to highlight her story and her just meet you and what you're doing. In part was inspired by what she did. And I've watched some of her YouTube videos and she basically got a pulse on the community in Utah and Salt Lake. And she went to, from what I learned from her videos, she went to farmer's markets and she put herself out there to socialize the idea years before she even did the actual legwork, right? The buying the property, the, the getting the money, the the working with the humane society and all those things that you, you have to do. She actually put herself out there in the idea to see if people wanted it. And so that's what I would like to do first in West Valley City, which has a larger Hispanic population. And that's sort of why I like the whole Gatos. I don't know if that the larger population is interested in Gatos like I am. I know they are in, there's a lot of flea markets. So if I get like tied into a flea market, then I'm golden. <laughs> yeah, because... we love a flea market. <laughs> yeah, no, and I love it. And I just, I, I want it to be something I feel that West Valley is neglected. Um, I moved here from DC. I love it. I love it. Oh West my God. Valley. I lived in DC. What? Dude. Yeah. Okay, that's so I, crazy. I lived in DC yeah, forever. DC proper or DC? Yeah, area. I lived on Capitol Hill for a while. I worked on Capitol Hill, but not, I was in hospitality. I worked okay. at the Hotel George in the High oh, Regency, Washington. Nice. Then I lived yeah. in Alexandria for ages. I had a pet sitting dog walking business that serviced all of Northern Virginia for a long time. No way. No way. I was in Maryland, mostly Silver Spring, but then I lived in DC proper. I adopted my niece. And so we needed to go to like the best public high school, Wilson High School. So I moved in walking distance to that school. So So I went to Maryland. And so I lived in College Park for a while. What? So we were like neighbors. When were you there? I graduated from Maryland in 03. It's been a while. That's the school I never graduated from. So UMD College Park. Terps. That's so crazy. Yeah. I was an English major there who 2006 dropped out because I got picked up for my, my job. So, and I've been with my job military service plus as a civilian for 21 years now. Wow. That's amazing. Congratulations. And a linguist. I studied French yeah. and international business at Maryland. So I too, I'm a linguist. I don't think I'm Love as it. good a linguist as you are actually, but yeah. I I was, I, I'm trying to be a linguist like you are. Good. So that is so cool. So tell us about your book. Where can we get it? Why should we buy it? Give us all the details. 
Sure. Yes. My book is, it's a chat book, a poetry chat book. It is about 90 pages. It's called My Body's a Junkyard. I don't know why I looked at it. Like, I don't know the name of my own book. <laughs> this is the proof still because my other, oh, here we go. There we go. So it's a proof. You can see that because it has a little weird little sensor thing, but that just says not for pre-sale. And it is a picture of me when I was 18. And I include the original picture, but the, uh, my publisher, so it's self-published, but it's through a hybrid publisher here in Utah called Glass Spider. And the husband and wife duo turned my picture into this beautiful art and then wrote the little thing that you read. And I loved working with them. And I, I really love what they did and, and how they made my dreams come true. You can find it where all books are sold online and then also in bookstores as well. Since it's self-published on Amazon and also Ingram Spark, Ingram Spark partners with bookstores and independent locations. So if anyone wants to buy it that way and then donate a copy to your local bookstore or your local library, then that would be awesome too. Ooh, I love that. Actually, I might just do that because uh, I feel like El Paso needs a little bit more of a, I guess, you know, we're Texas. Oh, yes. You know, it's you Texas. know what I'm I, about to say. Yes, I would love to send you some free books and I'll sign one of them for you. Thank and you. That, I would love to have that. Yeah. And I will get those to you. And then if you could donate some of the other ones, that would be awesome. And I will take them you, to the library. Yes. So yes. We can have a gay, queer, trans writers give them a chance give y'all a chance to get in in the t- texas that would be awesome yeah yes absolutely well i just want to propose a toast to you because i've had such a good time getting to know you <laughs> fellow dc turf linguist we have so much in common yeah. cheers to you thank you and i wish you nothing but success with your book i can't wait to read it cheers, cheers. I also want to propose a toast to our executive producer, Mark Winter. Thank you, Mark. And to our audience, thank you for joining us and learning about all these awesome guests that I bring to you every week. If you want to learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please make sure you check out CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. And here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.